Good afternoon, girls and guys. How are you today? And welcome into Mary's Kitchen. It was so nice. I've got quite a number of uh, fellows coming on, so a lot of guys, I think, are at home wanting to learn how to cook. So it's nice to see you on here. And uh, also, uh, I've got something really easy to show you today. Hi, Rose. How are you? I'll just wait till a few people come on because. I come on a couple of minutes early just so everybody can get sorted out. Hi Kathy, how are you? Kathy, you'll enjoy this. Hi Deborah. I made friends with your uh, auntie, Judith, in Whitby. So uh, she might be coming on today. Hi Joanne, how are you? And Debbie. So we're going to be working with herbs today and I wanted to tell you uh, a few little ideas. A lot of people ask me about keeping herbs. Hi. Pam, how are you? And Jean? Hi, Sharon. You're on your walk. Oh, you're on a walk. Wow, Kathy. Well, don't be watching me and walking at the same time because you just ended up in a wheelchair from falling. So I don't want you to do that again. Hey, Fiona, how are you? I just missed the end of that, so I'll, I'll catch it when I look back on the comments. Oh, thank you, Kathy. Thank you so much. And Jenny. I wanted to tell you about herbs a little bit, because a lot of people ask me about herbs, um, how long do they keep, etc. Well, I bought some uh, fresh basil the other day, and as you can see, I didn't keep it the way I normally keep it. It's, some of it's a little kind of bit wilted, but it's fine for the pesto sauce. And basil being the herb of love, I thought we could spread some love today in Mary's kitchen. Hey, Jody. <laughs> and Elizabeth, great. Oh, good to see all you girls coming on. Wow. Oh my goodness, far and wide. Hi Maureen, good to see you. Um, so what I was going to suggest to you, what you can do with your herbs, right? When you get them back from the supermarket, deal with them almost immediately, okay? This is cilantro, coriander that you see I have. And what I've done, it came in a growing pot, but I do not find these successful at all. In fact, if you have them sitting on your windowsill within about a day, they're, they're all wilting and going yellow, etc. So what to do is cut it uh, at the base, and this goes for parsley, and it goes for basil, and if you want to keep them in the fridge, they'll keep for probably two or three weeks like this. Just put a little plastic bag, which keeps kind of a little hum humidity in there, it's almost like a mini greenhouse, and put them in your fridge like that, and you'll find that they'll last so much longer. All right, that was just a little Mary's tip I wanted to give you about your herbs because I know sometimes these growing pots, or even if you just buy them in the shop and you're in a plastic bag, and that's my parsley, and I do the same thing with that. Just put them in the fridge and they'll last like that. Just a little plastic bag with a storage bag, you put that over top, and then you'll find that they'll keep a lot longer for you. <laughs> you won't go in there like I did today in my fridge and find slightly wilted uh, basil, but I don't mind because we're going to be grinding it all up anyways in my little mixer here. Hi Lisa and Rosie and Deborah, good morning. And Cheryl, hi. Oh, if you've got fresh basil in your garden, that's wonderful. I love fresh basil. I wish I could grow it so well, but I've got plenty of parsley growing and I've got plenty of rosemary growing and plenty of thyme, but uh, Basil lends itself better to warmer countries and more in the sunshine. I guess through the summer, hopefully, we get some warm weather, you can maybe grow a little bit of basil outside if you're lucky. This is so simple, okay? So you're starting with two cups. We're using our little mini chopper. And people have asked me where I got this. I got this from Aldi. And it was about 15 pounds, which is about $20. And I know that you can buy them in the States as well, okay? Because I know a few girls who've done it. And uh, anyway, this is an excellent thing. I convinced a friend of mine to buy one recently. Uh, Lorna, I don't know if Lorna's come on here. Hi, Amanda. And Linda, hello. And Pat. Um, 
And uh, I managed to find her one in Aldi, and you could probably look online and get one. But these are excellent because they do a reverse. And they're very simple. They're kind of like in between the large uh, Magimix and the small kind of blender. You could also do this in your Nutribullet or your Vitamix. All right, the same recipe. So I'm going to put my basil in there. My kind of wilted basil, because I should have put it in a water as soon as I got it home, but I didn't because I'm not. <laughs> I forgot actually, to be honest. Mmm, the smell is so fresh, it's so lovely. So we're just gonna chop that up real quick. See how fast that is? It's like seconds. You could chop, 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 chop on a chopping board, and this just makes the rice so simple. Okay, so that's about two cups of basil that we put in there. This is homemade pesto. So when you get your pesto done, put it in an airtight container. It'll keep for about a week in your uh, fridge, but you can also freeze it in an airtight container, okay? If you want to use it, make it at a stage when you feel like making it, and then put it into an airtight container. Now, somebody was asking me today, Nicole, uh, you were asking me about the nuts that go into the pesto sauce. Hi George, how are you? George is my friend from Florida, the most fantastic bartender at Bongo's. Lovely to see you. Say hi to everyone for me, George. Missing you all. Hopefully we get through this soon and we can get back flying. <laughs> Um, yeah, George Wales, he works at Bongo's and on the beach in St. Petersburg. So any of you Florida girls, if you get a chance to go over there, go give them a visit. My friend Susie works there and Jason. Um, so yeah, go give them a visit if you get around, uh, get a chance to get down to the beach, St. Pete's Beach, Susan Pace. You're right there on the beach, I think. Hey Tammy, hi. So okay, we got two cups of basil that we've, we've um, chopped up in here. Now there's several kinds of nuts that you can put in this so you can change the flavor ever so slightly. You could also roast your nuts which gives, gives it another unique flavor. Okay when you roast nuts it really brings the taste of the nut out but please when you're roasting them at like about 350, 375 in the oven don't walk away and pick up the phone. Don't walk away and do anything because they have a tendency to get roasted very very quickly and if they get burnt, throw them in the garbage because the taste, the taste is gone. That's it. They're finished. Um, it happens to me all the time because I do a butter rice with uh, roasted almonds on top. The times I burnt those almonds, I can't tell you. I just take my mind off it for three seconds. Okay, so we can use pecans for this. All right, and it's a third of a cup of nuts. It doesn't matter if you go slightly over. Or you can do a walnut. Okay. So Nicole, you said your son could eat walnuts, so there you can put walnuts in it, or you can use pine nuts. Now I managed to get pine nuts the other day at the store for specifically making this recipe, so I am going to use my pine nuts, and you can, as I said, roast these if you would like. I'm just going to put this whole package in. I say a third of a cup, but this is only 60 grams, it's probably about a third of a cup. And put your pine nuts in there. Now also I've got uh, three cloves of garlic, which I peeled a little earlier. I'm just going to put them in. That's, um, I'm not going to put the cheese in just yet. I'm going to put a little bit of olive oil in here. Okay, it's uh, a half to three quarters of a cup till you get the right consistency that you like. So I'm just showing you how simple this is, okay? So we'll just put a little bit of olive oil in there. We're almost finished. That's how quick it is to make. I mean, I tried to show you, because I don't, some people don't cook, and I tried to show you simple things, and Katie guessed me if you're out there watching today. Hi, Dana. This is a good one for you as well. Um, so we're just going to mix that all in together. And I'm going to put my, uh, i got about a third of a cup of Parmesan here. And if the consistency is too thick, all you need to do is add a little bit more olive oil, okay? And olive oil, I would say, if, don't change the oil because this is an Italian dish and I think to change the oil would spoil the flavor of it. 
So I'll just pour a bit more oil in there. It's half to three quarters of a cup, so I've got a wee ways to go. And if I don't like the consistency, I'm just going to add a little bit more oil. going to give it. Now I'm going to give you a couple more tips how you can change this recipe. Now there you go. That's all ready for storage now. Just to put into a storage jar. Look how lovely and green that is. As I say, if you want to change the flavor of it, all you need to do, you can roast your pine nuts, or you can put walnuts in there, or pecans. You can put almonds in there, and you can put cashews in there. So you can get some very different flavors. Hi, Vicki, how are you? And Manon, nice to see you. Hope everything, yes, you can put wild, now Manon's just asking me a question there. You can make, uh, if you have wild garlic growing, I used to have a lot of wild garlic growing, but if you have wild garlic, which is a lovely green leaves, make sure it is wild garlic, though and nothing else. I mean, you don't want to be putting a, something like poison ivy or something in there. Make absolutely sure, because the first time I ever used wild garlic, I was a little nervous because I thought, oh, but I got the right thing. But anyway, as long as you know what it looks like, it's fine. And yes, you can make pesto with wild garlic, which is wonderful as well. So that's the pesto. That's how easy it is to make. Add, try it with walnuts, Tracy. It's absolutely fabulous with walnuts. And uh, the other thing that you can do is if you want to make it a little more zesty, you could take the zest off a lemon and put that in there. And you could cut, uh, put the juice of half a lemon in there, not the whole lemon because it would be too much. Okay? Yeah, in the woods, you'll find garlic in the woods, wild garlic in the woods, it's wonderful. And if you want to make it spicy, I know you're going to be all freaking out that I never put any chili in mine this time, but I'm not putting chili in it because I don't want to. I can always add some fresh chili into my dish. Um, but you could put some chili in there too, I'd say about half of that. Alright, not the whole thing. So there's some different variances that you could make to the pesto to make it taste slightly different. Now this is absolutely fantastic. Boil yourself up some lovely pasta. You could do it through spaghetti, you could do it through penny, you can do it through any kind of noodle or, or tube and mix that all through and serve with an extra bit of Parmesan cheese on the top. Now this is also fantastic if you're making a tomato and mozzarella salad and get your tomato and mozzarella all on your plate beautifully. Um, you know, alternate your mozzarella and tomato, etc. And then just uh, take a couple of spoonfuls of this and just put it over top of your mozzarella and tomato. It's perfect for on um, salads as well. It's perfect for if you're having a barbecue and doing some chicken, you can put it on as a side dish and just dip your chicken in it. It's, it's so versatile. It's really, really, really good. So now the next thing I wanted to show you as I say when I'm cooking, I got this little towel. I forgot I put it here, actually. <laughs> Don't be afraid to take whisks. Okay? Especially when you're in the kitchen. You know, sometimes you have to work with the ingredients that you have. And uh, especially at this time. Now, a lot of people... I put a picture on there this week. Uh, of a picture. Of... And I just put Aperol time, and I must have had, oh, over a hundred people ask me what it was, <laughs> how do you make it, etc. So I thought, well, TikTok, it's Aperol time, okay? And uh, I thought I'd show you how to make this drink, because a lot of you girls asked me what this was. Hi, Alex. How are you? And Sherry. 
So I don't normally make cocktails in Mary's Kitchen, but I, I normally have one after I've been videoing in Mary's Kitchen. But I am going to show you how to make this because it's pretty simple. And first of all, you need to get yourself, um, these are, this is really an Italian cocktail. And I don't know if you've ever had Campari, but it's made by the same company, Aperol. And uh, it's really, really good. And what it is, it says half and half. Uh, half Aperol, half Prosecco, and also you need to put a touch of soda in there too. Now, I don't like to do half and half because I find Aperol is quite strong, like Campari. If you make a Negroni, it's uh, made of Campari and orange, a little soda and some orange slices. That's a lovely drink too. It's very bitter. Um, but this, um, Aperol, uh, is sweeter in taste, so I don't like it so sweet, so I sort of do, I'm going to put my Aperol in first, if you can see that, I'm just going to put kind of one part Aperol, yeah, it's very, very, I would say almost orangey, orangey flavored, or smell, anyway, but, but it's very, very sweet, I find it very sweet, so of course, I've got a lovely bottle of Prosecco here, <laughs> and, oh, I know what I'm going to do first, sorry, I'm going to put some ice in here first. I don't normally have cocktail hour at the same time, but uh, as I'm having Italian pesto tonight, I'll have a little Italian cocktail beforehand. And it is quarter past three here in the UK, so it's a respectable hour. So a little ice in there. This is how simple this little cocktail is. And this is a real cocktail. I didn't just make this up. This is a, just gonna go easy here with this. And then I'm just gonna top that up with a little soda. I've got some sparkling water actually in here, so that's fine. There we go. And then mix. I'm going to have to use my basil spoon. There you go. Tick tock, it's not even 5 o'clock. So that's your Aperol you were all asking me about. <laughs> yeah, it's 5 o'clock somewhere, that's for sure. I know it is in Australia at the moment. Let's taste this. Mmm. That's lovely. Yeah, the, the lesser of the Aperol more of the Prosecco and a little dash of the soda. So there you go. That's a little cocktail lesson for you as well. Maybe I'll make a Negroni next time. That's another Italian drink. But it's a very, very refreshing cocktail and it's nice to have on a lovely sunny day. So I hope you've enjoyed that today. And uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to be making next, but I'm sure I'll be thinking of something. I hope you all have a wonderful day. And remember, if you see someone without a smile, Give them yours. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for coming on. Bye.